This is Woodward's The Podcast, a production of the Kansas City Woodworkers Guild, with host Kevin Thomas and producer Chris McCauley. Here's your host, Kevin Thomas. Welcome again, everyone, to another episode of Woodward's The Podcast, a presentation of the Kansas City Woodworkers Guild. Uh, Our guest today is uh, one of the more talented woodworkers in our guild. He is a lifetime member who does some amazing work in period furniture. Please welcome to the show, Tom Smoller. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And uh, I I think that was overstated. (laughs) Um, I'll start you like I do almost everybody else. How do you, uh, how did you get your start in woodworking? That one, that one was kind of a hard one to answer because it's, it's always been that way. I've, just as a kid, I always was building stuff or actually taking a lot of things apart, if I remember right, and putting them back. And my well, dad was not allowed to have a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I did a lot of the work, you know, my mom did, and then we would have friends of the family over, and my job was to watch those people repair things. And uh, so okay. I built stuff, I built a my a lot of the stuff that was in my room, uh, a drafting table, when I was probably ten. Wow! Uh, so you're piece of furniture. A... The oldest one I can remember was a cedar chest. Um, I have no idea where that is anymore. But I had had no concept of hand tools. <laughs> <laughs> I just would buy uh, stuff at the lumber store, you know, as is. Mm-hmm. So you are literally a lifetime woodworker. I uh, pretty much. I mean, as far back as I can remember. Okay, I see that you brought in uh, some uh, documents with you today. Yeah, I uh, I always draw plans. I, I started my first paying job in high school was a draftsman, and uh, did that for uh, a while. And uh, so this is a, some plans I just sketched up for a, some captain's bed for my first son in 1976. 1976, wow. And uh, that was the oldest one I could find. <laughs> and then these are the, the current plans. This was this was of that block front chest. So. A little, little bit on the intricate side. Yeah, it's a little more intricate project. Yes. So you have to know to me, you have to kind of know ahead of time what you're going to do. You can't make it up as you go, especially with the reproductions. You always do it on paper, or do you? Uh, oh yeah, I, I sketch it. I I've used SketchUp. I've spent a lot of years uh, fixing medical equipment, CT scanners mostly, and I spent a lot of time on computers. And I've really, since I retired, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> I enjoy the the drawing up on paper as much as I do building it. So I kind of work through how I'm going to build it as I'm drawing it. That's good. Is that a, <clears throat> is that a, a, a skill you would recommend people uh, pick, try to pick up drawing out their projects? Well, yeah, I mean, and SketchUp's a great way to do that, you know, but you've got to spend some time learning that and, and feeling comfortable with it. Um, so. I I feel more comfortable with the paper. I've had a drafting table since I was 10 years old. Hmm. In fact, I had that original table till just probably five years ago. I rebuilt a new a new one. Well, then it must have been built solidly. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was the top. The bottom changed a few times, but. <laughs> well, how did you uh, How did you come to the guild, and what's its influence been on you? I've, I joined the guild in 2009, um, and that was I saw flyers at the woodworker show, okay. and uh, and it's it's helped me to to get to where I am now in the, the, the reproductions. Um, it was about 2003 that I 
decided to really get serious. I had, a, I, I bought, I'll back up. I bought a shopsmith in 79. Okay. And that's before there were contractor saws and all the other stuff. It was a pretty good deal. And uh, so I did a lot of uh, little things in furniture, like uh, uh, those bookcases behind me in the, on the YouTube channel. Those were made with that shopsmith. Um, and then, but I decided that a 2003-ish to get really serious and uh, actually saw Mark Adams was at the woodworking shows, was giving out uh, half-day seminars. And then he kind of inspired me to, so I got a joiner and a planer and a real table saw uh, okay. in 2004. And then, so that's where I started getting serious and, and that's how I found the guild. Okay. Um, you uh, tend to lean towards uh, period furniture. What, do you have a favorite period or? Well, that, right now it's the Chippendale, but that's only a recent phenomenon. I, I, if you'd asked me 10 years ago that I would be building stuff like that, I would have, I thought you were crazy. <laughs> You've done some some really uh, amazing pieces. Uh, hopefully, Chris will add it, add pictures of a couple in here so people can see the amazing work you're doing. Um, yeah, but most of that's really just recent. I mean, like I said, I I uh, the first time I my my goal in furniture making prior to coming here was to make it look like what's in the stores, which means okay. junk. <laughs> And uh, so I would just buy wood as is and, and try to make do. And uh, the first piece that I actually made that wasn't for oak or pine uh, was a tall clock out of okay. cherry. Cool. Um, you've got, you're one of the only members of the guild that has their own YouTube channel. What do you want to? You want to tell us about that? That, that started with the pandemic, and uh, we couldn't see the grandkids. You know, everybody was on lockdown. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, I started it as a way just to connect with them. And to my surprise, it was a big hit. I didn't, I thought I'd do a couple and, you know, that'd be the end of it. But um, I started out just doing the tools in my shop, and I'm a tool junkie. <laughs> So that lasted, I was doing one a week and that, that lasted for quite a while. And then I ran out of tools to show, so, but they, they really enjoyed it, uh, that part of it. Well, that's good. And you've built, uh, you built a project on there, I know. The last, the last uh, one I did was the, the, uh, the chest, the block front chest with the Newport shells. I did the whole, whole thing, which is way above the kid's head, but I figure someday, someday they may appreciate it because it's the videos will stay around. So, well, and, and uh, you're sharing it with the uh, public too, if right? They, if yeah, they know I, to find yeah, it. I, it's not, yeah, it's, it's a public thing. And I, I'm going to start a new project and I was thinking of uh, doing that one because it's going to be a kind of a complicated. What's your uh, new project? It's going to be a Newport corner chair. Ah. Chairs are always interesting. Well, this one's got, everything is curved except the two back of the seats. That's the only thing that's straight on the whole thing. Do <laughs> um, you have a favorite activity here at the Guild? Uh, certainly the, uh, tone, the show and tell and then the classes. I, I really enjoy, you know, some of the experts that come in from outside the Guild and even okay. within the Guild. But um, Have you taken... Uh, any of the classes? Well, yeah. what, what classes have you taken? Well, I mean, the, the most, what's really got me started into this uh, reproduction stuff was the chair, uh, the Hollingsworth chair with uh, Calvin Hobbs. And we did the footstool a year before that, and then we did the, the chair, but that really got me involved in the and that was with Calvin and not his dad? Calvin and all right. Well, then when his dad was here, we had the spice box. I did that one and. Kind of a talented family. Um, okay, do you think uh, teaching a class here at the Guild would be in your future? Yeah, I don't know what, I mean, like 
the, the stuff I'm doing, not many people like that style. I'm not sure my wife likes that style, but I enjoy sure the challenge it. of it. <laughs> well, you know, we can, since uh, I've got a new job coming up here, maybe we can find something there you go. for you to, to teach. Well, um, at this point, we're going to go to our final three questions. These are uh, three random questions that uh, may or may not have anything to do with woodworking. Okay. When you cut dovetails, pins tails or first, tails first? Tails first. Okay, that was easy. Burnt ends or pulled pork? Burnt ends. Okay, Kansas City original. And do you have a woodworking hero? Uh, I guess Christopher Schwartz. I took a, uh, uh, at Mark Adams School, I took a uh, hand tool class with Christopher Schwartz. So I enjoy a, reading some of his stuff. Uh, he's, a, he's a good guy. And that's really where I've learned. To, I, I started collecting. We had an antique booth and we went to a lot of auctions and I got, I was attracted to all the woodworking tools, even though I had no clue how to use any of them. <laughs> so I collected a lot of them. And so he really opened up a whole new avenue for me. And that's really what allows me to do some of this stuff now is being able to mix the, the power tools with the hand tools. There's some things that the hand tools just do better. Yes. Yes. And you can find, find the uh, antique tools that are still usable and user uh, yeah. grade. I've got a more than my share. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree. I have my own addiction when it comes to Stanley Plains and whatnot. And I've slowly been trying to give those to them. I've got three grandsons. And, Split uh, them up. And they, they have, they've, they've got their own toolboxes now. And... <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, Tom, thank you for being with us today. And thank, thank you all out there as well. Please remember the important rules of like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And so until next time, always work safe and get your sawdust on. Thank you. This has been Woodwards the Podcast, a production of the Kansas City Woodworkers Guild, with host Kevin Thomas and producer Chris McCauley. A special thank you to our guest today, to the Guild's Leadership Committee, and to all of our sponsors. For more information about the Guild, upcoming classes, and events, please visit our website kcwg.org. You can also find us on social media by searching for Kansas City Woodworkers Guild. And remember to hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell for notifications.